Here's a group of important US market vintage Omega watches, which will be the topic for today's video. If you're interested to learn more about other markets Omega watches, visit the homepage of this channel and in the playlist, tap and select imported models. Hi guys and welcome back to a new video with me, the Omega Enthusiast. There are many signs that helps indicate a US model, but the three main ones are, number one, their cases are mainly 14K gold fill or solid 14K gold. Number two, the case model usually has one or two leathers before the model number. Number three, the balance bridge has an import code, which I will explain in detail at the end of this video. Without further ado, let's go through all 20 examples and learn a bit more about them. Watch number one dates to 1949 according to its movement serial number. The case model is F6212 and sold in a 14K gold fill case. The case has a removable bezel and a snap-on case back that does not require a case gasket. It measures 32.3 mm across, excluding the crown by 37.3 mm from lug tip to lug tip. The case thickness is 10.2 mm, including the acrylic dome crystal. The case lug width is 16 mm. It's a lovely dress watch that will fit great on a smaller wrist size. Snap open the case back. Inside, you have a 17 joules automatic bumper movement on the Omega Caliber 342. Around 1953, it got replaced with a Caliber 344, which has a swan neck regulator system. Make sure the movement clamp and clamp screws are there to secure the movement. Watch number two is a fancy Omega watch dating to 1950 under the case model B6237. Many models and their information are unavailable on the Omega online database and sometimes even on Google search. If you appreciate my work, please support me by clicking that thumbs up button below. It is free to do. And if you would like to support my work financially, you can always do so on Patreon, link below. The case material on this watch is made of 14K gold fill, and it measures 33.3 mm across, excluding the crown by 44 mm from lug tip to lug tip. The long lugs are unique, but I like the brigade dial on this piece the most. Case thickness is 8.8 mm, including the acrylic low dome crystal, and it takes an 18 mm strap. The mushroom type crown is unsigned, but original to this watch. Snap open the case back and inside is a 17 jewel manual wine Omega Caliber 361 movement. You can almost describe this caliber as the manual wine version of a bumper automatic. Watch number three was a popular model throughout the early 1950s. The case model is F6231, and this piece dates to 1951. This piece measures 33.5 mm across, excluding the crown by 39 mm from lug tip to lug tip. The case thickness is 10 mm, including the acrylic dome crystal. And the teardrop lugs width measures 17 mm wide. The crown may appear a bit large, but it is the correct sign crown for this watch. The 14K gold fill three-piece case has a screw-in case back, and inside you have a caliper 342 bumper automatic movement with 17 jewel, which later got replaced by a caliper 344 movement. The case back will not hold without this unique metal screw ring. Also, make sure that the case gasket and the movement holder metal ring are inside the watch in order to secure the movement.
Watch number 4 is the center second version of watch number 3. Please note that many of these US models from the 1940s and the 1950s were available in both center and sub second. This model here is a G6232, dating to 1952 according to its movement serial number. One thing difference that you can notice immediately is that the case back is different from watch number 3. The reason for that is the metal ring makes things complicated and can fall off and go missing. Therefore, watch number 3 and 4 were originally sold with a separate metal screw ring, and both later had their case modified and no longer required this ring. To make things clear, watch number 3 metal screw ring version came with a caliber 342. The modified version came with a caliber 344. For watch number 4, this piece, the metal screw ring version came with a caliber 351, and the modified version, like this piece, came with a caliber 354. That said, this revised version is 1mm wider in diameter, and the case gasket is no longer located inside the watch, but on the case back instead. Watch number 5 comes in a 14K gold filled case and is under the model F6238 and is also a popular US model introduced in the late 1940s to early 1950s. This piece dates to 1952 and measures 33mm across, excluding the crown, by 39mm from lug tip to lug tip. Keep in mind that these watches in this video come with their correct original signed crown. Save you guys from doing all the extra work researching, so make sure to smash that thumbs up button to support this channel. The case thickness for, on this watch, including the acrylic dome crystal, is 9.6mm. As you can see, this piece comes with its original strap, buckle, and original boxes and paper. At least you get a sense of what kind of boxes these US collection model comes with. But of course, there are other box variations as well. Nonetheless, if you snap open the case back, inside, you will find a caliber 342 bumper automatic movement with 17 jewel on this watch. Make sure to subscribe to this channel if you guys have not yet done so. Watch number 6 is a classic solid 14K gold manual wine Omega dress watch. This example that I have here dates to 1953. It is a small second feature watch with a fancy curved lugs. The original mushroom type crown is eccentral as it is challenging to find one if the piece does not come with one. This watch is perfect on a smaller wrist as it measures 32.3mm excluding the crown by 39.2mm from lug tip to lug tip. The case is thin measuring only 8.6mm including the acrylic low dome crystal. The case model is BX6550. Snap open the case back inside, as usual, you will find the model number. The manual wine movement is a caliber 410 with 17 jewel. I will leave a link to a 1955 US collection catalog in the description box, where you will find and see many other models, including the prices. Watch number 7 is a US Beefy Lux Seamaster bumper automatic watch, and only US Beefy Lux case model will come in a 14K gold fill case. This is usually the faster method to differentiate a US model apart, by examining the case back and make sure it is gold fill. This piece dates to 1954 and has a diameter measuring 34.6mm, 
excluding the crown by 42.8 mm from lug tip to lug tip. The case thickness is 10.6 mm including the acrylic dome crystal, which carries a metal tension ring. Many of these US model Omega watches comes with several different dial variations. So what I show you in this video of each model, the dial may be one of many dials variation. Unscrew the case back, inside is an Omega Caliber 344 bumper automatic movement with 17 jewels. Make sure that the case screw and clamp are both there. The case back also carries a flat gasket. Similar to watch number 3 and 4, watch number 8 is the center second version of watch number 7. It is a beefy lug Omega Seamaster bumper automatic watch under the case model G6250. It is probably one of the most popular US case models during the early to mid 1950s. You may find watch number 7 and 8 common in today's market because the watch is well secure from moisture, dust, and other particles from entering. The 14K gold fill case measures 34.6 mm across, excluding the crown, by 43 mm from lug tip to lug tip. The case thickness is 10.6 mm, inclu including the acrylic dome crystal, which also carries a metal tension ring. Make sure whenever you replace the crystal to include this metal tension ring. Unscrew open the case back, inside is an Omega Caliber 354 bumper automatic movement with 17 jewels, and the serial number dates this piece to 1954. Again, make sure that the case screw and clamps are both there. The case back carries a flat gasket as well. Watch number 9 is a square manual wine vintage Omega dress watch under the case model N6259. Omega made many different square and rectangular watches for the US market. However, many did not survive due to their poor case design. Unlike an Omega Marine, these square watches are not moisture protected. So to find one in exceptional shape today is quite astonishing. Square or rectangular watches usually appear more prominent on the wrist even though their case measurement may sound small. The diameter of this piece measures 25.7 mm excluding the crown by 36.6 mm from lug tip to lug tip. The watch thickness is 9.3 mm including the acrylic dome crystal. It is wise to buy a square watch with a good condition crystal as replacement can be challenging to find. Snap open the case back and inside is a 17 jewel Omega Caliber 302 manual wine movement and the serial number dates this piece to 1954. The case does not take a gasket as mentioned. Watch number 10 is an early Omega automatic watch to carry a 500 series caliber movement. Compared to the previous bumper automatic, the 500 series are a new milestone achievement and innovation by Omega. It will require less wrist movement to charge up the mainspring, which makes it a better everyday automatic watch to wear. The case model is GX6260 with a case diameter measuring 34.8 mm excluding the crown by 40.5 mm from lug tip to lug tip. The case thickness measures 10.6 mm including the acrylic dome crystal. The case material is 14K gold fill. What I like about this piece is the side profile of the lugs. Snap open the case back and inside is a 17 jewels Omega Caliber 500 automatic movement and the serial number dates this piece to 1955. 
make sure both case clamps and case clamp screws are there inside this movement. The case does not take a gasket. Watch number 11 is a beefy lug Omega Seamaster automatic watch and the successor of watch number 8. Like watch number 10, it carries a new, innovative, upgraded automatic type movement under the 500 series. The case model is GX6250 and made of 14K gold film. If you find this case with an automatic bumper movement, immediately you know someone has replaced it with an incorrect movement. Another thing to remember is that the dials between an automatic bumper movement are incompatible with a 500 series caliber because they do not have the same dial feed precision. Case diameter on this watch is 34.7 millimeters, excluding the crown by 42.0 millimeters from lug tip to lug tip. The case thickness is 10.6 millimeter, inclu including the acrylic crystal that carries a metal tension ring. Unscrew open the case back and inside you have a caliber 500 automatic movement and the serial number dates this piece to 1958. The case back will require a flat type case gasket. Number 12 on the list is this outstanding 1958 Omega Seamaster automatic watch. I know some of you are thinking, isn't this the same watch as the previous piece but with a different dial variation? This is actually a mid-size version of the last piece on the case model C6274. Omega likes to do that with some of its popular model by offering a mid-size version back in the day. The case is 14K gold fill with a diameter measuring 32 millimeters, excluding the crown by 38 millimeters from lug tip to lug tip. The case thickness is 11.6 millimeters, including the acrylic crystal that requires a metal tension ring. I'll create a video on a few mid-size model in the near future, so make sure to subscribe to the channel so you won't miss out. Unscrew open the case back, inside you have a caliber 470 automatic movement, a mid-size version of a 500 caliber. The case back will require a flat type case gasket. Watch number 13 I would consider an extraordinary timepiece. Only a handful of vintage Seamaster watches were chronometer grade, and this piece is one of them, and the only version I recognize from the US collection under model number 9082. If you know of other US collection Omega chronometer models, please let me know in the comment section below. The solid 14K gold case measures 34.6 millimeters in diameter, excluding the crown by 42.3 millimeters from lug tip to lug tip. The case thickness is 10.9 millimeters, including the acrylic dome crystal that requires a metal tension ring. The case back will require a case gasket as well. What I like most about this piece are those sharp chamfer lugs. Since this is a chronometer grade timepiece, it requires a qualified chronometer movement. Unscrew open the case back, inside is a chronometer certified caliper 505 automatic movement with 24 jewels. If you want to know what kind of test is involved in being chronometer certified, please direct message me on Instagram for a copy of the COSC chart. Watch number 14 is a regular manual wine Omega watch dating to 1956. I'm pretty happy as this one is also a complete set with a different box compared to the previous one. So I can provide another example for you guys. The 14K gold fill case measures 33.3 millimeters in diameter, excluding the crown by 38.5 millimeters from lug tip to lug tip. The case thickness is 7.1 millimeters, including the acrylic do uh, low dome crystal which makes this a very slim watch.
Apparently, this is a presentation gift to an individual for 26 years in service. The owner is probably not a watch person or owns several pieces he usually wear and this piece is perhaps stored away since it is still in tip-top condition after all these years. The set includes the original inner and outer boxes, a signed paper, cushion, and the original strap plus buckle. Notice not all original buckles requires a signed logo. The manual wind movement is an Omega Caliber 510 with 17 jewels. Even though the serial number dates this timepiece to 1956, it was given as a gift in 1959 according to the booklet. Watch number 15 is an Omega Seamaster Pre DeVille automatic watch dating to 1962, which is the last year for the Pre DeVille dial variation as the word DeVille was added onto the dial later that year. The case model on this watch is LL6287-1 and is a popular model with various dial variation. The case diameter is 34mm excluding the crown by 40.5mm from lug tip to lug tip. The case thickness is 10.8mm including the acrylic dome crystal that requires a step metal tension ring. A Seamaster Pre DeVille or a Seamaster DeVille watch takes a unique type of case known as a mono shell or unishell case. You can learn more about it from the link above, and I highly recommend that you should watch that video afterward. You'll learn everything about the case design and how to open up the watch and get to the movement. The movement caliber is an Omega 550 with 17 joules, which is the successor of the Caliber 500. This is Omega's best 17 jewel vintage automatic movement without the calendar feature. Watch number 16 is an Omega automatic watch with the day feature, a controversial piece which I will explain in a short bit. The case model is KL6312 and is the only model in this video that comes with a 10K gold fill case with a steel back. The case diameter is 34mm excluding the crown by 41mm from lug tip to lug tip. The case thickness is 10.3mm including the acrylic dome crystal with a metal tension ring. When you unscrew the case back, inside is an Omega Caliber 560 automatic date movement with 17 jewels. Not to mention that the case back will require an O-ring type gasket. Like Caliber 550, Caliber 560 is Omega's best 17 jewels automatic movement with the day feature. So what makes this piece controversial? Well, according to online data, some Omega specialists claim that Omega only produced 3,000 pieces of Caliber 560. However, a few collectors including myself are starting to doubt if that's the truth since I have worked on many Omega with this Caliber alone. When a watch is rare, you are lucky to even come across one. Watch number 17 is a regular automatic watch without the calendar feature. You will notice that the gold content on some of these US collection is becoming 10K gold fill instead of 14K gold fill in the mid to late 1960s model. This could be related to import tariff or the price of gold becoming more expensive. The model of this watch is LLU6289, measuring 33.3 millimeters across, excluding the crown by 39.4 millimeters from lug tip to lug tip. The case thickness is 9.9 millimeters, including the acrylic dome crystal with a metal tension ring. The lug width is an odd size measuring 17 millimeters. Almost always, when you see a watch crystal that carries a metal tension ring, the case back will hold a gasket and vice versa. 
Unscrew the case back. Inside, you have a 17 Joule Omega Automatic Caliber 550 movement. The same movement used on watch number 15. Watch number 18 is an Omega watch in a square case design under case model D6650. Many Omega enthusiasts may find this 14K gold case design too fancy and undesirable, but in a way, it does resemble a Cartier tank, don't you think? The case diameter is 26.8mm, excluding the crown by 30mm from lug tip to lug tip. The watch thickness is 7.7mm, including the current acrylic dome crystal, but the actual thickness should be around 3mm less since the original crystal has a flat surface. An important note is that some of these US models are made available in yellow or white gold or gold fill. An example would be this piece, here is in yellow gold, but you can also buy one in white gold instead. On top of that, specific model, again including this one, are also available with diamond on the dials. Snap open the case back, inside is an Omega Caliper 620 manual wind movement with 17 Joule. The movement serial number on this movement dates this timepiece to 1969. The second last piece on the list, watch number 19, is an Omega Seamaster DeVille automatic watch with the date feature. The case model is KM6610. And please understand that knowing the model number does not always find you another one with the same dial. Remember what I said earlier? Many of these models exist with many dial variation. For example, a Seamaster DeVille is among some models with dozens of dial variation. I wanted to point this out as some people got upset with me because I provided them with the model number of a watch and they could not locate one with the same dial, thinking that I must have intentionally provided them with the wrong model number. Anyhow, the case diameter on this watch measures 34mm excluding the crown by 40.4mm from lug tip to lug tip. The case thickness is 10.6mm, including the acrylic dome crystal that carries a metal tension ring. The movement is an Omega Caliber 563 with the quick set date feature and carries 17 jewels. Watch number 20, also the last piece from the list, is this 1975 Omega Seamaster DeVille day and date automatic watch. One would assume that the case has to be in solid gold since the dial carries diamonds, but that is not always the case. This is an Omega model C6336 in 14K gold fill, measuring 34.8mm in diameter, excluding the crown by 40mm from lug tip to lug tip. The case thickness is 11.5mm, including the acrylic crystal. It is a nice watch, but I do prefer one in full steel or white gold instead. How about you? Inside the watch is an Omega Caliber 1020 day and date 23 jewels automatic movement. Unlike the predecessor 750 series caliber, you can quick set both day and date on this watch. That said, the 750 series caliber are better in quality than the 1020 series caliber though. In conclusion, we know that imported US model consists mainly of 14K gold fill watches that carries a 17 jewel movement. Many of these movements have a more jewel version as well. For example, Caliber 500 and 501 are the same looking movement, but 501 comes with 19 or 20 jewels. Due to high tariff, these imported models use a Caliber 500 with fewer jewels instead. 
Many of these case design are unavailable in the Swiss market as these are domestically manufactured in the US. In 1937, when Norman Morris became the agent of Omega in New York, an import code was assigned OXG on all the movement up until the early 1970s. That is why you no longer see this code on watch number 20. What you've learned from this video is just the basic knowledge to tell a US model apart, but it is a good start. A more advanced knowledge, for example, would be if you purchase a US market OXG Seamaster 300 with a white date disc. That indicates a replacement disc as the original should be black. There's so much to learn, but I hope this video has improved your knowledge. At this point, it has taken me three full days to complete this video, and I've spent several weeks servicing and cleaning most of these watches. Your support is highly important, so please like this video. Let me know in the comment section below which is your favorite three pieces. Thank you for taking the time out of your day, and I look forward to seeing you in the following video.